Good morning. Hello. Um, it's great to be here and to be part of an event with so many exciting startups. I'm Tana Sazaji, the founder of a digital startup, Insido. Now, as startups, we have great products, or at least we think we do. But our real challenge is to convince everyone else of this. As a startup, we need to build awareness of our product, our name, and our culture. We call this brand. Now, why is brand so important? Surely, if the product is great, it can speak for itself. Well, here's the thing. Here's a black container. Now, inside this black container is a brown fluid. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know who made it or where it came from. But if I ask you to close your eyes and blindly swallow the contents of this liquid, would you do it? Probably not. But paint it red, white, and blue, and you wouldn't hesitate. That's the power of brand. Now, we can interchange brand with trust. How many of you have signed up to iTunes? Good. Well, you signed a 56-page contract. Did you read it? Of course not. That's the power of brand. But these are big names, Pepsi, Apple. A brand could be more than just a name. It can share the very culture of a company. Let's do an experiment. I want you to think about someone who you admire. It could be a boss, a colleague, a mentor, a leader. And I want you to think about the qualities that you admire. Now ask yourself this. Are you thinking about that person? Or are you just thinking about yourself? Aren't you thinking about the very qualities you hope to have? You see, we are wonderfully selfish human beings, and we love nothing more to, than to just talk about ourselves. And whatever we're saying, we're always sharing and are communicating a part of who we are. You see, marketing is just simple communication, and communication is innately human. Now, Steve Jobs picked an apple for a logo. He then took a bite out of it. Does that bite mark represent scale? to stop it looking like a cherry? Does it represent his determination to take a share of the market? Or is it in memory of his hero, Alan Turing, one of the earliest pioneers in computing, who cracked the Enigma code by taking a pipe into a poisoned apple? Who knows? What's important was that it meant something to Steve Jobs and represented a part of what he wanted Apple to be. You see, we are always communicating about ourselves and sharing who we are. So, when we launched the Insido campaign, we knew the answer to a good campaign would lay in who we were. So who were we? We were excited, ambitious. We knew we had a great product. Everyone in our office had that sparkle in their eye, the sparkle of someone with a secret. We had a secret and we were ready to share it. So our campaign had to be ambitious, exciting, but we were also vulnerable. Like most startups, we weren't blessed with an infant supply of money, and we knew that every decision made and every dirham spent was crucial. Essentially, all our jobs, the very existence of Insido, depended on us building brand awareness very quickly. So we created the Save Steve's Job campaign. Now, Steve was real. Steve is real. He's our marketing guy. And the campaign was rather simple. We gave the public the opportunity to save his job. Now, that might sound rather ruthless. Were we genuinely going to fire Steve if the campaign failed? Absolutely. You see, we, all our jobs were on the line. It was always crucial for us, for the campaign, to share our position the reality of a startup, our ambition, our excitement, and crucially, the pressures of the startup business. And here's a short video of how we did it. Hello, I'm Tanaz, and I'm the founder of a startup called Insido. Insido is your curated Google for Dubai. We shortlist the best of the city and give detailed reviews of what people need. 
Our challenge was to launch Insido in a highly competitive industry full of established brands. We have one shot to break into the market. So meet Steve, our marketing guy. We set him a one month long challenge to get 100,000 people searching on Insido to save his job. The campaign, Save Steve's Job, played on the cheeky connection to Apple. And yes, his name's really Steve. We decided to sell the truth. Steve represents the real startup pressure, which helped humanize the marketing and hook people into our brand story. We took a big risk and did not promote Insido directly. We chose to stir up curiosity. So how did we do it? We got Steve looking pretty, launched a teaser campaign. We plastered Steve around the city. Oh, and on websites too. Built a microsite to introduce the story. Got the DJs making noise and radio shows. You could search Steve on the Sido and win experiences. He did some old school campaigning with the public and businesses featured on Insido. We rallied support from the bloggers, marked the milestone for the followers, milky every moment. Every post linked back to Insido and educated people about our product. And it worked. Here are some of the results. the video it seemed like plain sailing but we had our little moments and we made some mistakes but crucially we learned from those mistakes and here's our top five tips okay. don't sell it all at once you're excited about your product you have so many amazing features they have a problem and you have the solution now whilst that is true or maybe true you can't, people cannot simply digest it all at once. You'd be amazed at how many adjectives I can squeeze into a sentence about Insido. And I have first-hand experience of being told by an investor to calm down. But while it is a cliche that less is more, it definitely seems to be the case when communicating your brand. We found it useful to share our USBs with our target audience and let them determine what's actually important. You see, by being more selective in your messaging, you run less risk of going off track and just emulating a big brand. Be clever with social media. Now, we spent thousands of hours promoting Insider on Facebook, and we had brilliant responses, comments, shares, likes, but nobody was actually liking our Facebook page. Now, it was, it was confusing, something was going wrong. And the answer was annoyingly simple. We were promoting our Facebook posts and not our Facebook page. So the minute we went to promote the post and they liked it, the minute they did, they were gone forever. Only by actually liking our page were they subscribing to future posts. Now don't get me wrong, promoting posts is important and it works for big brands. But as a startup, nobody knows you. And there's a very thin thread between you and your target audience. You really need to secure that connection because you don't want to have to pay twice for an introduction. Make friends with Google. I guess it's tempting as a startup not to want to throw your money at one of the most powerful companies in the world. You know, $500 is nothing to Google, but it's everything to us. But if you want to be popular in the playground, it pays to know the big boys. We just didn't know how to do it. And there's a lot to get your head around. URLs, bounce rates, keywords. There's an endless pool of jargon to get your head around and to master. But just don't be afraid to be a geek. You see, the more you know, the better you'll actually play that game. And then, of course, there's SEO. They say, they're right in saying that there's no better place to hide a body than on page two of Google. Just don't make the mistake that I did of thinking of it as a marketing tactic. It has to be incorporated into every decision you make. The alt tags you apply, the URLs you generate, the page speed of your site, the keywords, the images. It's all taken into consideration for your ranking. And of course, 
Google are always changing the rules just to make our lives a little bit more fun. If you've never failed, you've never tried something new. Now, however much thought you put into it, marketing is unpredictable and people are unpredictable. We found it helped to play with multiple creators simultaneously and then apply the same environment in terms of target audience um, and day of the week and add only a fraction of your budget behind each of them. Then put your remaining budget behind the posts that perform the best. It might seem very simple, but it'll help get you the highest impact for your return. Exploit your team. Now, just because you hired them as a data analyst, that doesn't mean that's all they are. You know, people have hidden talents, and we took a DIY approach to our marketing. In fact, everyone in our office was involved in the campaign. Our UX designer became Dubai's leading expert at removing nasal hairs using Photoshop. Now, in hindsight, it would have been easier just to buy Steve a trimmer. Our editor-in-chief became our uh, Steve official response line, waking up at all hours of the night to respond to his fans. And our researcher became our in-house makeup artist, learning how to craft sweat on Steve. Now, don't feel guilty about it. I didn't. You see, they signed up for the startup experience, and it's got to be your hands on deck. And know your marketing apps too. We love Vividi, Wordswag, Snapseed. They can make any ugly picture or video look pretty awesome. And there are plenty of other apps out there that can make your life easier, so research them, because they can save you money and time. So those were our top five. If any of those make your journey a little bit easier, then it's been worthwhile. You see, in technology, we have our own language. We boast of our algorithms, our tech stacks, our uh, recommender systems, but the user doesn't care. You see, however technical or automated your product is, it all comes down to people. Marketing has to be human, and you have to have a human story, because you've got to give people something to cling to. So, where do you start? Go back to what excited you about your product. What was it that made you feel it was going to be a success? That what was your secret? For me, I, I wanted to build a platform that would curate and suggest the very best of the Dubai, to answer every need, every category, from plumbers to bakeries to rooftop bars, nurseries, a platform that didn't exist. The user has the right to the best experience, and I knew Insider could deliver that. So what is it that excited you? As a startup, that could be the base of your campaign. Now, you may be thinking and sitting here, well, marketing is the least of your problems. And you may even come from a technical or engineering background and find the whole concept of marketing a little overwhelming. And maybe you don't even have a budget for it. Well, my sincere advice to you is to make marketing your problem. You see, you need to give your product the best shot at succeeding. You need to invest in your product to build awareness. You need to give people a chance to discover you. Thank you very much. Um, I would love to hear your experiences. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'd love to, if any of you have experience or are in the startup world, I'd love to meet you. So please do come and see us on this side of group. We're by the DNS stage. Thank you. Well, you were. Thank you.